<clears throat> so last week we have learned the last way to factorize okay so just a little bit revision because we'll start a new concept now what we have learned for last week is about factorizations uh factorize so exercise a is talk about expansion but in exercise a we mentioned the formula which is the difference of perfect square formula it can use to expand it can also use for <clears throat> factorize it's a very helpful one so that's basically for exercise a but exercise b start for like how to factorize so first of all we have um common factor common factor is something we always need to check do we have common factors and the second thing we can think about if there's only two terms with a minus sign we use difference of perfect square a square minus b square <clears throat> the third thing we think about if there's four terms okay four terms we think can i group two and group the other two to create a new common factor and then we can factorize it again so that's the third thing grouping is the i don't really use it very often uh, then we jump to exercise c we talk about three terms we have two terms four terms and for three terms well for three terms the first thing we think about is still common factors do we have common factors if we don't have common factors then we have a single x squared and then 8x plus 15 or we have a coefficient for x squared we can use the cross multiplication to factorize the first number factorize the last number to try to cross multiply them and adding them to give you the middle number so if it will work then i can write about the com the factors so like we have examples there this is a single x squared now we can get things more complex we have with some coefficient a for x squared same thing we factorize the a we factorize the c trying to get the b as the middle number here so same way to factorize and as i said exercise c and exercise d this method the cross multiplication uh, multiplication method is not always helpful so sometimes you can't factorize by using that way by using this way it must be really good numbers okay when i have good numbers yes i can factorize by that way so and also i write here not all the quadratic can be factorized we can use completing square to check if is plus k it will cannot be factorized if it's minus k yes it can be factorized so it depends on do we have a plus or do we have a minus if it's plus a constant after the completing square we can't factorize it if it's a minus a constant yes we can factorize that and then i said completing square if this thing can be factorized you can always use completing square to factorize it if it cannot be factorized well i can see from completing square as well so exercise c and d yes you can factorize by that by that method but it's not 100 percent sure like helpful like to factorize so this is when we have the good numbers for c and d but for exercise e is all the things we can factorize by that way okay if it can be factorized so it's a really good way to do uh quadratic factorizations so after we learn this okay so basically we use three exercises to learn how to factorize quadratic we have covered all the method we can use here now we can have a look at 5f the next thing we're trying to do is solving quadratic equations okay solving quadratic equations now i was before we talk about solving quadratic equations we want to talk about one thing we also talk about what is an expression and what is an equation I see this common mistake a lot of times every year. So what is expression and what is equation? You might make this mistake, okay? You might make this mistake. So just be aware of that. So what is an expression? Expression is without equal sign. I can say 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 that is an expression okay that's an expression so an equation can be 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 that equals to 0 okay for expression I can only factorize I can't do much things about it I can only factorize it so I see a wrong solution like 
Okay, I see something really bad. Like this is the worst thing I can see because they think, oh, we all have common factor two. I can divide everything down. Okay, that's not like one or two students doing that. It's just like I can see maybe a quarter of the class doing that. I give a uh, worksheet last year to year 10 students and ask them to complete that. You can't believe how many students doing the same thing. That is, it's not something, they, I think they know it's wrong, but it's just unconscious. I just think, oh, there's two, it's great. I can divide everything down. So it's confused with, with what we can do for equation, what we can do for expression. We can't do this, okay? This is wrong, this is very wrong. Because you just divide everything, okay? I have two apples and you suddenly make that equals to one apple. That doesn't make sense, okay? You just half everything. Okay, that doesn't make sense. So the thing you can do is that. Okay, that, like that's a good thing to do. That's not the worst thing because everyone's saying, oh, two is a common factor, we can take two out. That's all right. But you know what's the worst? The worst thing is why I give a question like, I'll just change another one, okay? It's, it's just the idea. Um, 3 over 2x squared plus um, 5 over 2x plus a half. Okay, this is the worst because I give this to students and students think, oh great, common factor, like common denominator 2, I can times by 2. So make it 3x squared plus 5x plus 1. Okay, that's what I see like they're doing. You have half apple and you suddenly make it equals to become one apple. So you times everything by two. That doesn't make sense. So what you can do is you can take a common factor out for a half and then just divide a half or everything. That's all right. Okay, that's all right. But similar thing for equations. Well, equation is better. Okay, equation is better. Okay. I make it equals to zero. Well, I can equals to other things, but I make it equals to zero. So what I can do here is I can times everything by two on both sides. Okay, so what I'm talking about here is by on both sides. So what I will do is I will times this by two and I will times this by two. Yeah, that's all right because I can times or divide or add or subtract both things on same side, uh, both sides of the equation. So this one can become 3x squared plus 5x plus 1 and that still equals to 0. It's not because I just times 2 on one side. It's because I times both sides by 2 but one side 0 times 2 is still 0. So that's what I can do for equations. But you can't do the same thing for expression. In this expression, I can only take common factors. I can't times or divide the same number on both sides. Okay, you can't believe like, how was the percentage get that question wrong. I still have the copy of that. I also like analyze why it's wrong. And it's a really bad mistake. And that mistake will carry to year 11 and year 12. Year, my year 11 accelerated class, they're still unconsciously like doing the same thing. Like, they say, oh, good, there's a number I can divide it and easy, and then that number just disappeared. And all the point is not correct after that. All the point become half of the original. So that's what's happening. So um, just be aware of that, what you can do for expression, what you can do for equation. For equation, you can time things on both sides, divide things on both sides, add or subtract things on both sides. But for expression, you can only take common factor out. All right. <clears throat> now back to what we'll learn for this lesson is how do we solve for quadratic equations? Well, for quadratic equations, uh, I can only solve for one form. It must be ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. Okay, it must be zero on one side. Okay, this zero here. I can only solve for zero. If on one side is a number, say one, two, or three, or four, like something like that, it doesn't work. It must be zero on one side. Okay, it must be zero on one side. Okay, so that's it. Couple of steps. Three steps. I'll say three steps. The first step is make it into ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero form. Second step is factorize left hand side. 
or say the white to on both sides times two like any coefficient if it's a common factor you can divide that like simplify okay si factorize simplify and factorize Simplify and factorize left hand side. And then the third step is use non factor law. Okay, each linear, each factor equals to zero. Okay, each factor equals to zero. Show one example with you. Just see example B. Okay, exercise B. So first step, I must have one side to be zero. So I need to make everything to one side. Okay, move everything to one side and must have a zero on the other side. Now So first step is make that equals to zero. And second step is factorize. Okay, simplify or factorize. Uh, I can't really divide, like I can't see any common factors I can divide or times. So I will just do factorize. So I want to factorize three and eight to make a 14. I'm not sure if it's possible or not. I can try first. Because if you think about completing square, it's very hard. If you want to complete the square, it like, looks very terrible to complete the square now. So I'll try, I'll say 1 and 3 is the only combination I will have for this one. And 8. Okay, 8 is a 4 and 2. So I want a larger number, so I'll make the 12 and the 2. But I need negative 14. I can go for that. Negative 12, negative 2, add together. Negative 14. So that one works. <coughs> What I will have is x minus 4, 3x minus 2, and that equals to 0. Okay, I factorize the left hand side and make that equals to 0. What you will do if I can't use cross multiplication to factorize? What do you will do? Yeah, complete the square and then see if it can be factorized. If it can, then I can factorize it. So we try this method first. If it doesn't work, I try complete square. Later, like the last exercise, I'll tell you a really good way to check whether it can be factorized or not. Like a really quick way to check uh, rather than complete the square completely. Okay, so it's a quick thing to check later. So after I have this, I have two factors. It's a times b equals to zero. So as you know, one of the number, <coughs> if it's zero, then the whole thing will become zero. So what I can write is either this equals to zero or this equals to zero. I don't need them both to be zero. I just need one of that to be zero. Then the whole thing will become zero. Okay, factor A to be zero or factor B to be zero. So what I can solve is x equals to 4 and x equals to 2 over 3. Okay, that's my final answer. I can solve up two solutions here. I can solve two solutions here. Cross multiplication? Yes. Completing square? Okay, so if we can do this method, you won't try complete square because it's harder, it's like it's more steps to involve. But if this method can't be done, like as I said, it's not all the cogetic can be factorized by this way. When the number is not good enough, like say you have fractions involved, this way it won't work. It only works for uh, integer numbers. So then like you still want to factorize it, but I can't factorize by this method, you try completing square.
Ja, sehr viel zwei. Okay, so that's one example. I will show you. Well, I'm going to show you another one. Like I said, C is not satisfied. I need to expand and move everything to one side to make a zero. So it's not zero there. It's not working. But I want to see D. Okay, I want you to see D. For D, this one is three times 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 squared. What I can do first is I can divide 3 on both sides of the equation. What I will have is 2x plus 1 squared equals to 0. Well, not necessary. I just want to show you you can do that for the equation. You can divide the 3 on both sides to simplify it. Like I said, this is simplification. I can make looks easier, like looks shorter. So what's 2x plus 1 squared? 2x plus 1 squared is 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. That equals to 0. Yes, 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. That equals to 0. Okay, it's still two factors, but I have the same two factors. Like, these two factors are the same thing. So, I can say is either this equals to zero or this equals to zero. But you solve out the same thing because it's exactly the same. So in this case, my x will be minus a half. That's my only solution. I have two solutions before. Remember, I have two solutions before. But like this one is the only, I only have one solution. I will talk about the number of solutions later as well. But this is a perfect square form. Okay, it's a perfect square form. It's ax plus b squared. Like it's a perfect square form. So when it's in the perfect square form, you only have solve out one solution because they are exactly the same factors. You solve both equals to zero. They have the one like unique solution. So that's just unique. So I'll show you one example with a unique solution and I'll also, uh, also show you the questions with uh, two solutions, okay, with two solutions. And now I want you to have a look at S. Okay, I'll show you another case. I hope. Uh, wait, 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 let me see. This one won't be like that. I'll just write another one beside this. Show you another case. Well, I'm not going to talk about this now. Like I'll talk about in next in next exercise. But think about we have one solution for ax squared plus bx plus c. I will have three situations. The first situation is the first exercise example I show you. I will have two solutions. For the second one, I'll show you when it's a perfect square, you only have one solution. So one solution. One solution. So unique solution. Or oh, there's a third case which will show you no solution. Okay, when you have no solution, I can't solve out anything, it's possible. It doesn't like linear, you can always solve out what is x. For quadratic, sometimes there will be no solution. So when it will be no solution is when it cannot be factorized. Okay, when you when you try um, completing square and you see a plus k there that doesn't work, cannot factorize, then that's when you have no solutions. Okay, it cannot be factorized, therefore you have no solutions. Just let you know in advance. That's what you will learn in next exercise. When you have one solution, you have perfect square. Okay, when you have perfect square, like identical factors, 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. When you have two solutions, it's two distinct factors. Okay, you have two distinct factors, like they're different. Okay, they're not perfect square. You have 
x plus b times the x plus d and that's two distinct factors then you will have uh, two distinct factors uh, two, two distinct solutions okay after you know this i want you to use the rest of time to complete the four questions left here okay a c e f to complete those five uh, four questions left here and also okay we'll skip page seven and page eight first okay we'll come back to that later after finish all the skills that's application i want you to go five h after you finish those four go five h in five h i want you to complete square and factorize for these questions because you will spend a long time to do that so this lesson is a light lesson so i want you to spend some time to investigate on factor uh, completing squared and next lesson i can be a little lighter because it will be monday next week so complete square what i want to do to, is to complete square and factorize the rest of that so 5h okay 5h